Hey everyone, my name is Danilo Petrovic. I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Janis Kudla. I'm Evgeny Donskoy. I'm Henry Laksan. I'm Peter Turepko and you're listening to the Game to Love podcast. Hey, welcome back, tennis fans. Here we are. It's a tennis podcast. We're back and we're here to talk about tennis for a change. Absolutely loving this one. We are going to talk about uh, some of the results from last week. We had some uh, Adelaide. We had the Melbourne Somerset series. So we're going to speak about the finals of them. And then we're going to get on to Sydney this week and obviously Adelaide too. And some of the results that have been flying around there. How are you, JT? Yeah. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm really good. Uh, I'm looking forward to just sort of relaxing on this podcast. I yeah. might just say whatever I feel like, um, not worried about anything. It's not going to be too intense. Uh, and we're not allowed to say the D word. The D word is going to be banned from this podcast. I've already seen some people asking us in the chat about the D man. We're not talking about him this one. We will be talking about it tomorrow, no doubt, because I'm sure there's plenty more announcements happening but this one's going to be all about the tennis. And we was both just talking about it off air, saying we've missed out on a lot of it because of the D drama. We've not been able to see much. Um, we obviously saw the first week we covered Rafael Nadal in that final, uh, with yes. which he won. There was a few other events we was covering. Ashley Barty, of course, doing very well in one of her ones. Yep. Um, and then we saw a bit of Radu Khanna, of course, which wasn't a very good start to 2022. Um, no. But let's get into it. Um, we've got Vlad the Third here saying tennis question mark. Uh, <laughs> this isn't a legal podcast. He can't quite believe it. But shout out to Vlad. Um, I'm sure we've probably got quite a few new people watching us as well, which is great. Um, but usually we do do tennis podcasts. That's hence the name. Uh, it's not just always D drama. It's not. Uh, it's just uh, overshadowed all of the the build up to obviously the Australian Open and all of these great lead-up tournaments, which no one's really talking about, but we're going to uh, tell you about them now and some of the results that have been flying around in case you haven't been able to take your eyes off the other drama. So there's been some great ones and no better place to start, I think, than uh, we'll we'll rewind uh, back to last week because yeah. I know it was, boom, Adelaide. There you go. I've switched the background for us just so and that I'm, we can talk I'm about... Go on. And I'm going to fly through these as well. I'm yeah, not going yeah. to take too long. We're going to go through it because we've got one, two, three, four, five events. Two in Adelaide, three in Melbourne. So these are the results in the bracket. We're going to announce the winners live on the podcast right now. I can announce me and Ben didn't win any of them. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Shock. But there was a lucky winner. So first up, WTA Adelaide won. First event of the year. And we had Lackett Dio winning with 102 score. Broke the 100 mark, which is pretty impressive. And of That's course, really Ashley Barty was the one to win that event. So shout out to Lackadio. Well done, if you're listening. Well done. And out of me and Ben, I can announce Ben beat me on this one. So shout out to Ben as well. I needed He's leading that. one love. I so really on, needed that. Do you want to talk that. about Ashley Barty quickly? I'll let you. After I've done it, I'll let you say a little piece about each of the players. Okay, yeah. I mean, sure. Uh, that She was the heavy favourite going into that one. I know she was the number one seed. I, I had 55% a... of people yeah. picked her in a bracket as well. I think it was safe. And obviously the toughest match she had was against Coco Goff, which was the first match that she had. It went to three sets. Coco was up a break in that second set and let it sort of fall away. So yep. it shows what a high level Coco is playing at, uh, at the moment. But then she sort of steamrolled everybody else. Straight sets all the way. Kenin, uh, Sviontek and Ribikina in the final. So yeah. I, well I done, think the Sviontek one's the most impressive uh, and Coco really impressed me. And that's why I had her going far in the next event, which she's doing all right in. Uh, yes. Let's move over to Adelaide 1 for the men's this time. And the winner of this one didn't quite make 100 uh, is Xanders, uh, X-A-N-D-E-R-S-S, with a 96 score. Shout out to Xanders. And well done, of mate. course, the winner of this event was Gal Monfils. So well done yes. to everyone who picked Gal Monfils. And Gal's back, Ben. La Monf. He is back. It's great to see. Uh, you did well. You had, I think you had that final, didn't you, Monfils, uh, Hatchinov? But you definitely had Hatchinov in there for sure. Yeah. 
Um, I, I'm so super excited for Gal Monfils. He's 19th in the rankings at the moment. He's still there or thereabouts, which is great, considering he had such a lackluster last year, really, to still be up there. I, th- I think he could actually start challenging people like uh, in and around the top 10 again, which is really promising. And obviously this tournament... He uh, he looked pretty good. He didn't drop a set for the whole entire tournament, beating Selendolo, Tommy Paul, uh, Kokonakis, and then Hatchinov in the final. I would probably say the Kokonakis one is the biggest. Um, mm. Is a real big result and a signal of a tent in Australia. We knew we know Kokonakis much more recently. He's just beating John Isner, yeah. and um, I don't know. Let's hope Monfils is going to be fit because later on in the video we'll find out he actually has been injured now and pulled out of the next one, uh, which mm. is a bit unfortunate. But I don't think it's anything too severe. So if you are a Monfils fan, we're hoping we still see him in the Australian Open. And listen, he could do a little run. Um, out mm-hmm. of me and you, I beat you on this one. So I beat you on the men's, you beat him on the women's of Adelaide. So it's one apiece going into Melbourne. Yes. I'm going to change the background. Uh, I don't have a one. Melbourne one on there. Uh, sorry. Oh, we'll just go back to the old background we started with. Then. <laughs> oh, well, we're going back to Sydney. There yeah, you go. Yeah, we'll go back to Sydney. That'll do. And in this one, the winner of the ATP Melbourne one was Ayodez 31 with a score of 72. Well done to well Ayodez. Done. We will be recording all of these winners as well on a spreadsheet and awarding prizes towards the end of the year for people who get a lot of wins. Um, and of course, the winner of this one, we did cover it. Rafa on the Dow, very popular pick. Yep. I believe I had Rafa, so I'm more likely I beat you on this yeah, one, which you I definitely have. Did. Yep. And um, anything you want to talk about in this one? Uh, I mean, we sort of covered it all of the whole week. Rafa didn't really have to play too many high-level opponents. That was sort of the thing. But it was a good warm-up tournament for Rafa, I think, uh, in Australia. He still got tested by Crezzy in that final. Uh, and it was a very awkward style player to be playing. So I think Rafa just did enough. He's just Rafa uh, just warming up and getting used to that foot, the new foot. Yeah, and Crazy now, career high, moving through the ranks. Mm. Watch out for him. No one's going to want to draw him at the Australian Open. That serve volley is pretty dangerous. And he Horrible. impressed me a lot that week. Um, yeah. Before we go on to the next one, just shout out to all of the men. It's great to see Jeans now join the membership. I saw him playing around with some of the modes. Oh. Uh, testing them out. G- GTL, and he's got a Ben one and a JG one there. Oh, you're lagging um, quite a bit there. Sorry, man. And then anyway. we've got Francisco here saying, hey, how are we doing? Uh, great to see some a lot of members. If you haven't joined the membership, what are you waiting for? Make sure to join. Indeed. So uh, the other one, we didn't we have a we had the Melbourne Somerset number? There was number one and number two that were playing uh, on the women's side. So do you want to tell us the set? Somerset one, which was the one with Simona Halep in, uh, and she played Kudametova in the final. Um, yep, one second. I, I'll just tell you about how Halep actually managed to get there. She played Kudametova. They played three times. She's beaten her all three times, and uh, she, her route to the final was pretty pretty easy. I think she she just walloped everybody. Golubic was the only one who took a set off her. And then, uh, yeah, she just got it done against Zhang and then Kudametova. So a very, very good performance from Simona Halep. And I think you had a win in the whole thing as well, didn't you, JG? Yeah, so I beat you on that one, uh, I'm yep. pretty sure. And the winner on well, the no. overall was Magaman. So shout out to Magaman yep. with a score of 104. Really good score. Um, and very another good. victor there. We're going to be recording all of these, like I said. Uh, next event was... Uh, are we on the last one? Number I think this two, is the last yeah, one. It's... Melbourne two. set two. The winner yeah. of this one was YL with a score of 70. Actually, it's a draw. It's a draw. We've got Ratchet, someone we know, a friend of the yep. podcast. Well done to Ratchet. He's listening. Well done. And YL with 70 score. Um, and the winner of this one, of course, was Anisimova. How impressive was she this week? Oh, she was uh, outstanding as well. Uh, she surprised me because I wasn't sure which one we were going to really see, but she has been in by looking back at some of her forms. She's played some sort of uh, exhibition style things and she's been doing really well in those. And then she's come into this Melbourne tournament, uh, beat Van Utvank, who's not ever an easy person to play. So Steyer, Begu, Kasatkina, and then Sasnovich got to the final. And I think we should probably speak about her because it's a name we're probably going to be seeing a lot more of, I think in 2022. She had a great, 
back end of 2021, yep. obviously beating Radu Khan, who beat in Halep, uh, Indian Wells, wasn't it? And now she's got to a final uh, and she's into the top 100 now. She's up, I think she was 107. Now she's 77. Wouldn't be surprised if she's knocking on the door of a top 50, top 40 soon. Yeah. We've got Imad there asking, uh, when is the draw coming out for the Australian Open? That is obviously the big thing now mm. for the Australian Open. And that is going to be, if you're listening in Australia, it's going to be today for you. But yep. for us, it's going to be tomorrow. Yes. So we'll be covering that when we wake up, no doubt. Exciting to see. Uh, we're obviously going to have some D news as well. I'm not going to say his name. I'm going to stick with just saying D for now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's move on because now we are up to date with the more recent events. That's all the ones what have been. Um, I don't think I said who won out of me and you on them last year. No, you didn't. Just uh, I think I don't want to get too ahead of myself. But I think I beat you on these ones. If I'm probably, honest, probably, mate. I think, I think I you had... started strong and then you started to fade, but you're doing all right right now. So I think it's going to be pretty even going into Australian Open. I forgot um, to enter one of them, so <laughs> yeah, that's not a good start. No, terrible. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, let's hope I do better in Sydney and in Adelaide too. That's all I can really hope for, isn't it, really? Yeah. But where did, where did you want to get started? Do you want to start in Sydney? It's sort of the bigger tournament, isn't it? The Sydney ATP and the Sydney um, WTA okay. especially. That's yeah. where all the big names are. A lot of our favourite women's players are playing over in Sydney at the moment. And a lot of them have been doing very well, apart from... Uh, our US Open champion, unfortunately, who I know I was sort of trying to will her through uh, by sort of giving some sort of reasoning behind why Rybakina might lose. But I think I sort of knew deep down that Rybakina's just got to a final. She's in good form and she's a horrible player to play. Big serving, six foot one. And yeah, just, I don't know, a nightmare if you're not on your game. So That's the thing. She's been playing already before this event and she looked really yeah. good in the event prior. Uh, losing in the final, I believe, to Ashley Barty. Then coming up against Radu Kanu, it was always going to be tough. This is, here's a quote from her. Uh, she said, yeah, I was just fighting. I mean, at the end of the day, I just want to keep putting myself out there. Even if I keep getting knocked down, it's just about getting back up and basically just falling in front. Uh, you're one step, you're falling in front. You're one step better, you learn more. And she's yeah, talking there about her losses and how she can learn from them. Listen, I've already said on previous podcasts, I think the US Open was a great triumph. I think it has come as a bit of a shock to the tennis world, and herself included. She, this girl's not played a full WTA tour. She hardly knows any of the players on the tour. She's played a select handful of them and managed to get the better of them at the US Open. But she's not worked it out. She's not played enough tennis. And I, for one, I remember after the US Open, I said, I don't think she's going to win anything for three years. That's, that's the statement I made. And I'm going to stick with that. I think it's going to be some time until we see Radu Kanu winning again. I think when you win something so big at that age, um, not for everyone, but for her, I just see the case of I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult with all of the pressure on her to adapt to being that superstar. It's one thing being a great tennis player, but being a superstar and a tennis player is a big thing. And I think it's right now at her age, maybe a bit too much for her. Uh, and it's going to take her a little bit of time but I'm not questioning her ability. She's a fantastic tennis player. I think, and I'm sure, mm, I, I do I do hope she's going to come good in the future. I think it's good that at least she's not, uh, she's not being too negative. She sort of knows it as well. She's not alluding to the fact, oh, I'm going to go on and I'm going to win another like three grand slams this year. And all. I think she's, she's saying, I've never, I haven't played a year on tour and I've, won the US Open, it would just be nice to get a full year's tour in and get to play some of the other players. I don't think she's really expecting to beat them. Bear in mind, she's probably only played like before Wimbledon, like ITF level tournaments, yeah. that type of thing. She hasn't it's really come anything. up against the, yeah, she hasn't come up against these absolute crazy well be beating players. Like and there, there's such a mixture of different styles on the women's tour. And there's big hard hitters as well. And not to be funny, when she played at the US Open, she didn't really play the big, hard-hitting players. She did have to play players who were more her similar stature, yep. and she was able to wipe them off the court very successfully. But now she's playing people who are a lot bigger than her, a lot more power than her, and she's going to have to try and deal with people with massive serves. And she's going to... She's, 
it's all a learning experience. And I not like just that experience. Like I think yeah. that's the big thing. Stop. I don't think we need to focus too much on what they can do in terms of tennis because Radu Kanu technically is, is a great. very good. Is a very good tennis player. Um, mentally not quite there, and experience wise not there. I know she's won a Grand Slam, but she doesn't have any experience on tour. And as Ross is saying here, she's been on tour for six months. She's got her head screwed on. She'll be fine. I think one, so. thing, one thing you can't criticise with her is her attitude. No. Seems to be a very positive, mature attitude for someone of her age. And I'm hoping she does come good. But I think it's going to take a little bit longer than a lot of people think. Yeah, you've got to remember she's going to probably have a target on her back as well. Like all of these other women on the tour who have been on the tour for like three, four, five years and... They haven't even come close to winning a Grand Slam. And she's done it at the second attempt and hasn't even played a year on tour. So there's, they're all going to be after her. No matter what, they're going to want to wipe off the court like Ribakina did. Six, was it six love, six one? So I think that we, we could be seeing some other one-sided losses like that coming Raducanu's way, if I'm per perfectly honest, against big, hard-hitting players. Yeah, you, you got Kathy there agreeing with you saying exactly, Ben. Her opponents in the US Open uh, were not what she's faced recently. She does need some time and she needs to remain positive. Yeah. She has all of the potential to become an uh, absolute, like, well, she could definitely win more slams in the future. Just about, like you said, experience. Who would have thought she'd have won a grand slam in her second attempt? No one. It's just a fantastic story. Now it's where the real work starts, though. But anyway, yeah, I I don't know if you want to speak any more about the the actual uh, match and stuff. I saw that she was she was sort of trying her best and really trying to fight uh, every single every single point. I just think Ribakina just she obviously Radu Khan was her first event, wasn't it? She didn't get to play one beforehand. Just a little bit disappointed, but Ribakina is just on hot form right now. Right. Uh, next tweet we've got on here, we do have Andy Murray, uh, another, well, British <laughs> well, a player. A more positive story about British tennis. Yes. First thing I need to talk about is the Tennis TV logo. I don't know if you've seen it. They've got a new logo for 2022. Are you a fan? The tennis I'm balls all cut up? Going to have to grow on me, that one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Not, it's a little bit strange. I, initially, when I saw it, I thought, what's that? And then it, I, I do like it now, I must admit. But my first impression, I wasn't keen. Yeah, I think it's a grower. Uh, I'll have to uh, see that a few more times in the uh, in the future, and then I'm sure I'll get used to it. I I like this. It's got a nice sort of a, uh, I don't know, symmetry to it in a sort of way. I quite like that, but I don't know. I'm not used to it yet. It's a bit no. weird. But on the actual tweet, Andy Murray fighting on battles back mm. to defeat number two seed Basas Vili. Brilliant. Uh, two tie breaks and then 6-3 in the third and moves into the quarterfinals in Sydney. Andy Murray's still in that event. I believe I've got him maybe winning the whole thing or final. I, I, I know I've got him going deep. <laughs> I forget which one it was. There's been so much happening. But Andy Murray, disappointing first event, uh, losing to Bagnis. Yeah, And there's bounce back with a really, really good win. Basas Philly, not, a, not an easy player to beat. And I've nope. been pretty impressed with him. He's got He moved over to a new racket. And he was talking about his new racket, how beating a player of Bastiasvili's stature um, has given him a lot of confidence going into the US, uh, into the Australian Open, knowing that he can beat some really good players and he believes in himself a lot more. And I think Andy Murray, with the, with a good spirit, can be very dangerous. Yeah, and also somebody, nobody in the, say, top 10 is going to want in the first round. Yeah. That is like, that's like the, the one you want to avoid. Imagine, well, yeah, any of those players. Like, imagine someone like a, a Rublev or someone drawing them. Yeah, or Sissipas. Or people who are sort of a little bit vulnerable uh, when they come under a lot of pressure. And someone like a, a Grand Slam champion like Murray, he can really take it to, especially in the early rounds, he's still got his legs under him. Yeah. So He seems motivated as well. I did see this, what Eddie's saying. He was talking about winning some more titles. And his goal now is to reach 50 career titles. So. Oh, wow. Let's see if he can get there. That's great. Great to hear he's uh, setting a, like, a little mini target as well. They're not going over the top as well. Yep. So that's nice to hear. And Gene there saying, imagine we get another Alcatraz, uh, Alcatraz, Alcaraz <laughs> uh, Murray match. That would be pretty cool. I would yeah. like to see a Murray Sissipas one. I feel like, I would, um, again, that was pretty close it last was, time. It was, yeah, I know. 
What about uh, Karatsev, Mari? I quite, we might get to see that well, this week. This is well, let's give a uh, foreshadowing what we're going to be talking about next. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't think we've got anything on Karatsev, but he's no. doing well. He started the year strongly, of course, one of the sort of goats of game to love, really. We had him mm. on before the Australian Open last year, well, this time last year, yeah. and he stormed it. So let's hope we can have another fantastic year. Maybe a dark horse for the Australian Open. No oh, one's talking about it. Don't let's tease see. me with it, JG. Don't tease me. I would think I would. Uh... I was actually, how crazy is this? I actually was going back and watching some of like the highlights of the beginning of last year with Karatsev and just the level was, I don't think I've ever seen, I've seen tennis like it, to be honest. Yeah. It's literally, it was like he was playing perfect tennis, winners from everywhere. Hope he does it again. I really do. Anyway, next tweet we've got here. This one, one of your faves, Leela Fernandez. <laughs> there you go. She's uh, saying, I'm so excited to announce that I'll be training, playing and living in Lululemon from here on out. What should I wear at the Australian Open? And here we go. It's quite a cool outfit, isn't it? Yeah, it's a cool brand. It's a really yeah. good up and coming brand. I don't know how to say it. Let me know in the live chat. Is it Lululemon or Lululemon? No, I think it's Lululemon. You call it, I, I've always called it Lululemon when I've seen it, but that's really? probably incorrect. It's probably JG's way of saying things. I probably got but, it wrong. I'm the boomer. So we move up a little bit rather than look at her bum? <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> no, yeah, I'm really pleased that she's been able to get this deal. Um, hopefully it can help her. It gives her a bit more fi financial support as well. And she can focus on her tennis without having to worry. I don't think she's ever going to have to now because she's doing so great. But great to see. Um, one of the sort of young ladies on tour getting such a great deal. Um, and yeah, she fully deserves it because she's worked hard. Yeah, she really has. Uh, hopefully there's big things to come from Leila Fernandez in 2022. She's looked good so far. Hopefully. Uh, it's a nice brand. Uh, yeah, it's really good. It, while we're talking about brands, Monfils on Artengo. What do you make of yeah, that? Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like I it. He's, I find that strange. He's, he's I don't know. Doing... I don't know how much he's been paid for that, but it's strange. Well, we just won a tournament. It must be doing wonders. The new Artengo. Apparently, Maybe. you are right as well with the pronunciation. Oh, Gala, okay. they're confirming it is Lululemon. So, brilliant Fair stuff. Enough. There you go. No my no my brands. No his lemons. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Right, on to the next one. This one is actually about Gail Monfils. Uh, it's from Tiago Montero, his opponent uh, at this tournament this week where Monfils did pull out at one set all, saying, always a pleasure uh, to share the court with Gail Monfils, a true legend and inspiration, wishing a fast recovery and see you in Melbourne. So that's really nice though, isn't it? Just yeah. to see uh, Montero showing utmost respect for what is he knows is an absolute legend on the yeah, top. I, I love Montero as well. He's a really respectful player. Uh, can, he gets player. frustrated when he's losing. I've, I've watched so many challenger streams, but listen, that's a fighting spirit. All sportsmen don't like to lose, and you got to credit him for his respect. I mean, he's always gracious in defeat. Um, yeah. But Monfils pulling out injured, not a good look just before the Australian Open because he's just won an event prior and looking really good. Yeah. But it, fingers crossed, it's not too severe from what I've heard. I think he did reply as well, Monfils. You go okay, down. Apologies. It's all right. There we um, go. Yeah, so thanks, Tiago. Good luck for tomorrow. See you in Melbourne. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So all good, mates. All right, on Moving to the, on. Ne the next one is uh, it's quite a big a good one. one. This one's a big one because they've actually just kicked off in their match, these two. Ooh. We're talking about Arns Jabur. <laughs> <laughs> we should have right. had the button. We should have played the button uh, for this like, If well. only, yes. Conta V and Jabur. Uh, same picture, new season, payback for last year and welcoming Annette on Twitter. <laughs> Great to see those two doing the uh, the same posing again. Choking. Wait, is this Arns Jabur posting this? Yeah, yeah. It it's Arns right? Jabur posting it and it's just, they're just reenacting the same picture from... Uh, from last year. I thought they might do it the other way around. I thought that Contavi <laughs> might... <laughs> no, no, it's got to be this way around because yeah. Contavi keeps beating her and she it's keeps true. taking things from her. She took, obviously, the race to Guadalajara yeah, yeah. last last year, the last spot on true. the bus. Um, 
and Ons Jabur wants some revenge. I'm, I hope she can get it. It started right now. I don't know what the score is. Just one Anyone game broken? in, on serve. Yeah, on just, serve. Just... But I am going to be cheering Ons Jabur. I'm not, I think you're probably the other way, right? Yeah, I've got Contavit in my bracket. So even though it's a win-win, to be honest, uh, if either of those goes on to win the tournament, I'll be super happy. I know that you'll be really happy if uh, yeah. Jabur wins the whole thing. Um, I, I wish them both the best in the Australian Open as well. That That is a one final I would love. If that is yeah. the final of the Australian Open, that would be, I don't know, a dream. I think, I think we'd have the most fun ever in a final. I think there's still so many big players who, um, yeah, yeah. neither of these two are probably, are they top five? Maybe Kontovic could be sort of sneaking in, but there's so many other names. You've got obviously Asata, Barty, Barty and uh, Muguruza right up yeah. there for me. Yeah. Um, in even eager, maybe sort of in and around them. Sabalenka, but, sa- well, not Sabalenka. <laughs> Let's talk about her as well. I don't think we've got yeah. something on it, but it's been a shocking start to 2022. Oh, wow. One to forget for her. She can't serve. She double forks every serve, doing underarm serves, getting wrecked on it as well. Just terrible. I don't know what's happened to her, if I'm honest. And uh, well, listen, I know we both was a bit reluctant to even put her in our top ten. We had a quite a way down. Yeah, I wish I'd have just left her off completely. Well, I'm good. I, this, it's a bad start to the year, but it's. I can't believe in two matches she's served 39 double faults. I don't think I've ever heard statistics like it no. from a tennis player. And 39, I don't understand how that's even possible. Even if you were just trying to just get it over. I don't think you, Sarah Rani's ever even done that. No. Nah, <laughs> it, Maybe she has. It's uh, the fact that she got 18 in the first match, and you thought, ah, oh, she's probably gone back to the drawing board. She's practiced her serve. She's got the coach in there. 21 in the next match. What's the next match going to be? 25? Is she going to keep going up? Like, hopefully not. Hopefully she starts correcting this because it's shocked. She's not going to win a match serving that many double falls. Yeah, it's as Eddie says, it has to be a mental thing at this point. It's, it's going to crush her. Though. Yeah. yeah, it's going to crush her confidence if this keeps up. And it's sad because she's only 23 and she was touted to be winning Grand Slams last year. Yeah. She was getting quite deep in some tournaments, but then the nerves got in, the mental side, and it's very sad for someone so good and so much potential to be having problems serving. That's the It's one of the key attributes of tennis. Come on. All right, on to the next one. We're back again. It's Ons Jabur and saying, I think I'm playing better as a player. I'm much better on the court. I'm more confident. That's what we like to hear. Uh, Ons Jabur, she was confident last year as well, though, wasn't she? Really? She was, but she did have some short fallings at the end of the sort of events. When when I really wanted her just to get it over the line, she did fall apart a few times. Um, I remember that one. I forget exactly what match it was, but the drop shot, I think it might have been US Open. The drop shot just all went to yeah. pop, basically. And yeah, I think she gets struggles a bit with fatigue as well. Sometimes a long event, she gets she does suffer towards the end. But if she's feeling confident, I'm always going to be confident in her. She's got the best button on the women's tour up there with Leila Fernandez for me. And she's a very, very good tennis player. So a confident Ons Jabur is someone you do not want to meet in the Australian Open. Very true. Let's move uh, over to this one. This is talking about Adelaide and some interesting matchups in the Adelaide quarterfinals. We've got Tommy Paul. Now I've kicked him out my bracket. Now he's doing great. That's typical, isn't it? Uh, he's up against Marin Cilic uh, in the quarters. We've got Montero Mutet. That should be quite a tasty battle, that one. Mutet's playing really well at the moment. Yeah, he is. Yeah, so, really impressive, Mutet. He did have one incident where he... I forget what it's called. Um, there's, a, it's a, there's a term, but he got forfeited the match, basically. Yeah, What's it called? I think, well... He, Deported? He, he, he got, <laughs> yeah, he got, yeah, that's it. Off the court. <laughs> yeah, no. He got... Uh, yeah, he was just... Uh, I think it was just... It, was, it wasn't a hindrance or something, was it? It was just... He was just swearing or something at the umpire or said something. It, it's or... happened every season, apparently, since he went to, into challenges. Every season, at least one match a year, he's had this same incident occur so it's no surprises we know what he's like he's a bit of a hothead uh and he ended up getting defaulted in his match um he will play montero will be the favorite against montero i think he's going to beat him i think chilich is going to beat paul uh um, yeah what do you think of them too 
I think I th- I agree. I think Moutet, we need to give him more credit than we have. He's beaten to get to that stage. Jan Leonard Struff and Martin Fuchovic in pretty easy straight sets as well, which is yeah. impressive. Uh, and now we, I think he'll beat Montero as well, if I'm perfectly honest. And the other match, we got two All Australian. Yeah. Two Australians, yeah. Vuc- Vukic versus Kokonakis. And Kokonakis, like you mentioned earlier, beat John Isner in three tie breaks. How many people can say they've done that? Not many. <laughs> <laughs> but he did a good job there, managing to beat him in the final set tie break. Really well done. And then we got on the on the other end. I think we could see a potential upset, maybe. Ryan Denek, Hatchinov. I think he could do it. Yeah, I can't call it. It's 50-50. I think Ryan Denek definitely has the ability to beat Hatchinov. Of course, Hatchinov will be the favourite, but... I yeah. would never sleep on it. I can't actually pick that one, um, but I'm going to go Kokinakis on the third match. I think he's going to beat Vukic. Uh, I've been really impressed. He beat John Isner, like you said. Yeah. And the only way to beat John Isner is in tie break. So if he was to win, it was going to be that way. Definitely. Uh, I've just got here, just so I can bring it up, uh, I've, I can just drag it onto the screen just quickly, just so you can see the Sydney one as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I just was having a look at it at the same time. Here we go. Ooh, hang on. Sorry. There you go. Can bring that up it's not in the same look but you can sort sure of see good. it yeah and crazy so got... going again is he yeah against dusan Lajevic, who we always write off and then he always wins uh crazy i fancy him for that one yeah and then me next... too i think it's a good draw for him what do you reckon on the next one that is a real tasty matchup a karatsev sanago have they played before do you want to see their head to head because i'm fascinated I'll have a, I'll have a quick <sighs> something makes me think yes. that they did in dubai year. Yeah. And, and when that was the one that he actually won in three sets. Was it the it semi-final? Was, it was, no, I think it was the round of 16. I'm okay, sure. so it was earlier on. But earlier. they did, I, rem- I remember them playing each other last year and Karatsev beat him, right? Yep, two sets to one. And then went on to win the tournament in Dubai, the uh, ATP 500, his first ATP title ever. So really a great memories from the last time he played Sanago. Uh, in and around the sim- same sort of time of year, early in the year again. I think I, th- I fancy Karatsev again, I think. I'm one. always going to go for him, but I don't know. It's a close one. Um, I hope Nakashima beats Apelka, but that's yep. another one which can be in the balance. I feel like yeah. Nakashima did beat him last time. Uh, and Goffan Murray, that's wow. a really good draw for Murray. Of course, Goffan, I was looking at some stats of this one. They've played a few times and Goffan's never won a set against Murray in all the times they've played. Um, That's mad, that. And Murray has a lot of dominance. He seems to do very well against him. Of course, this is not the real David Goff. And I know he's pulled together some results here, but yeah, yeah. he's had a torrid time. So this is perfect for Murray. And I'm really happy I picked him to go far in this event. I think I had him winning it. So let's <laughs> hope typical. he can beat Goff. Typical. The one time I had him going out to Basilashvili and now looks like Murray's... I might, I might bet against Murray all the time because it's. I want to see Murray do well. <laughs> and if I do that, he's definitely going to go far. So so uh, you got me to thank, Andy, for that. You're going through. You might even win the whole thing. Yeah. I think that sort of sums up this podcast. Thanks for joining us. Um, yep. Anything you want to say? Uh, no, it's just great and to make get sure back. it's not about the D. We can't no, talk about the D. I'm not talking about the D. And no N's or D's. I'm just happy to just get back to speak about some tennis. We're, we're going to hopefully bring you another podcast uh, soon just to bring you the qualifiers which are going yep. on uh, at the moment. We'll be giving you our qualifiers to watch for the Australian Open. We'll wait until the, we've had the final round of qualifying uh, take place and then we'll give you, I think it's our, like our top three or top five. Yeah. Uh, and we'll do that on men's and women's side as well. So I'm excited for that. That's one I've always looked forward to for every Grand Slam. And at the moment, I haven't even had time to think about it. Now no. I'm going to start thinking about it a lot more. I'm going to start watching a lot more tennis as well. Usually in our head, we already know what qualifiers we're going to pick. I agree. I've not fully looked yet, but I no. will have some. And then we've got the draw as well tomorrow, the big draw reaction. So plenty more videos to come. Big shout um, out to uh, someone who has just, well, they've just won, I think, this evening, which is uh, obviously someone we've had on the podcast or two people we've had. How weird is this? Two people that are playing early on this evening are both people that we had on the podcast. And that is Jesper de Jong. He won very nice. uh, convincingly against a, a winter. And then Thomas Mahak as well. And he's oh, won. Nice. And now they play each other in the final round of qualifying <laughs> for the Australian Open. So... <laughs> 
It's a GTL uh, qualifier. A G- uh, there's going to be at least one GTL uh, alumni in that first round qualifying. So good luck to both of you guys. Uh, yeah, big fans of both of you. Yeah, Gala there asking, did you watch Tomic's meltdown? I did see that. Um, typical him. I thought he would be really up for it this year, but same old meltdowns from him, moaning about COVID and PCR tests. Uh, we got Serjan saying, guys, it's not the D, it's DJ. <laughs> That's the letter. Maybe we should have just called it DJ. Um, but yeah, let's wrap it up there. Just want to give a shout out to all of the new members as well. Something we're really trying to push on the channel. If yeah. you want to join the membership, hit that join button next to subscribe and you can get a badge next to your name, which does change for length of service. Um, so it's pretty cool. And there's also some new cool emojis you can you can put on the live chat. I think we've added some uh, Rafa, Djokovic and Federer ones today and John Silk. So <laughs> don't forget John Silk, the big four, we call them. <laughs> so make sure you uh, join the membership if you want to support the channel. But for now, we love you and leave you and see you tomorrow for more drama on Game to Love. Will do. See you then, guys. Like and subscribe. <laughs>